Kim, you there? I am here, Rich. How are you? I am great. Good to have Kim Jones of uh, NFL Network, NFL Media Group here on the phone. Um, so I, I will just give you the floor. You tell me how many fingers Jason Pierre-Paul has and, and how many of them are, are football ready as they currently are. Well, that's actually a very good question that I cannot answer at the moment mm -hmm. because in addition to the amputated right index finger, he does have a fractured thumb mm. that has been repaired with pins, and he's, of course, undergone other surgeries as well. And I'm being told, Rich, you know, you're talking timetables and, and whether there's some optimism here, particularly from his camp, and I would tell you I think there probably is um, for many reasons, which we could get into if you like. But they, are, they believe, and Jason Pierre-Paul has been told, that in six weeks, he will be recovered from these injuries because that is the length of time this thumb will take to recover. He has been told this. I'm not vouching for this. I'm saying that is what he has been told. And the other injuries he's dealing with, the other issues, will all clear up within that six-week time frame. If it seems a bit optimistic, I would agree with you. But that is the that under under the care in Miami. That is what he has been being told. Kim Jones joining me here on the program. Look, you know the Giants management better than better than most, Kim, and you know they're they're a unique group of people. I mean, Steve Tisch visits Plexico Burris in in jail. Uh, yep. uh, the Mara family uh, has a big heart, and they were saying, look, let let's look at your finger. Let's have you fly into New York to see some hand specialists here. We. You know, we're the New York Giants. We've got some ins here in the community. You know Tom Coughlin is as hard-nosed as he is. Um, he, he has got a big heart in that chest of his. But my question for you is learning on Twitter that he's having his finger taken off. What does that, what does that mean for his relationship with the Giants, Kim? I think it will be fine, and I, I think it actually is fine, Rich. And I think using the Plexico example is one that I've used as well. Listen, you could, you could make the case, and some have, that he ruined what could have been another Super Bowl season for the New York Giants. And as you noted, people visited him in prison. They embraced him. They had compassion for him. They will not abandon Jason Pierre-Paul. I would be incredibly surprised if somehow uh, he was not a New York Giant this season. Uh, that being said, was there initially anger? Perhaps. I'm absolutely certain there was shock. I think we were all shocked at the news. And I, I think you're right, though, that uh, John Mara, the Tisch family, Jerry Reese, the general manager, Tom Coughlin, you know, will they, will they hope that Jason Pierre-Paul has learned a very, very tough lesson? Yes, they will. But my sense is they will welcome him back and really, really right now are hoping for the best for him as a human being. And then the football, they hope, takes care of itself. Kim Jones joining me here on the program. How's it how's it sitting within the New York, uh, New Jersey fan base, this whole story? I think it's a, that's a good question as well, Rich. Uh, it's a mixed bag. You certainly have the people who, frankly, come across as if they were never 26 years old making a bad decision. Because the, the, the <laughs> bottom line is, this was a bad decision, but one that many people make and skate through. And this time it didn't work out. This time he paid an incredible price for fireworks. Entrell Roll, the obviously former Giant, former captain of the Giant, now with the Chicago Bears on social media, said he sets off fireworks every July 4th as a treat for the children in his, you know, extended family. And, and that this is bad luck and that he, he knows and, and believes that Jason Pierre-Paul will bounce back. So uh, was there a bad decision here and bad judgment? Yes. Uh, and, and frankly, you know, it, it's a, it's a life-changing decision that turned out in a way that absolutely no one uh, would have hoped and certainly he did not foresee. And so what about the contractual machinations that will have to be, there, there, there's business to be conducted uh, once everybody finds out Jason Pierre-Paul's condition and his readiness to play football and his desire to remain a giant and desire for the Giants to have him be such, you say that that, that is still there. So, but what about the contractual machinations of, of signing a contract and when he can be seen by the Giants, et cetera? What do you, what do you know about that right, right now, Kim? Well, he's still in the Miami hospital, Rich, as we speak. Um, the expectation is, as of yesterday, was that it would be another couple days. So whether that's 
Uh, tomorrow or over the weekend, you know, again, not barring any setbacks or something like that. We don't, we just don't know, but it is expe- expected to be relatively soon. He's discharged. I would expect he will play under the franchise tag, the $14.8 million franchise tag. Uh, again, the Giants, you know, will continue to hope that A, he's better and improved and recovered, and, and B, of course, that he can help them on the football field, provided he's doing well overall in life. And then they will go from there with him. But he's vital to their defense, Rich. You know that as well as any of us. Steve Spagnolo installing a new system. He is going to be very aggressive. A lot of that aggressiveness is predicated on a pass rush that even with Jason Pierre-Paul on the field last year, they often did not have enough of a pass rush. They can't go without him and expect that to improve this season. So he is vital to the Giants' chances on defense, in my opinion. And, Kim, let's put your old Yes Network hat back on here. <laughs> A Rod. I mean, let's yeah, let's throw A Rod out there, right? I mean, A Rod is not on uh, on the American League All Star game at uh, All Star team, and and uh, do you think he deserved to be on that team, Kim? I did. Now I like stories. I mean, I'm a writer at heart. I mm-hmm. like storylines, and it would have been a great one. Uh, the players didn't vote him in. There are probably some scars remaining from his taking on his union and a union chief at the time, and Michael Weiner, who was. Uh, dying of cancer and has passed away since. So um, he left some scars, Rich, but what he's doing this season is remarkable. And you would get a kick out of the fact that here in New York, even by the New York media, he is almost universally being completely embraced. It's like a whole new love affair with Alex Rodriguez. Well, he's America's sweetheart, Kim. <laughs> Very much so. I, think I enjoyed so. your interview with Carly Lloyd, by the way, oh, speaking of you. someone who actually might be America's sweetheart. Hey, look, she, she is. I mean, and, and, and Jersey, right? Are you a Jersey? We love it. Are you Jersey? We absolutely love it, yep. Okay. Where in Jersey are you from again? I'm from Pennsylvania. I live in oh. Bergen County, New Jersey now, there you though. Go, Bergen so County. We embrace everything about the, the women's soccer team and the champions. Hey, look, I'm from Staten Island. Half, of it, half the people, you know, uh, are, you know, three bridges attached to New Jersey. Law, you're a Philly, you're a Philly guy. I mean, that's, that's Jersey, well, right? That's right. Jersey right there. Yeah. No, nah, you frown Philly, upon Philly, it. I you mean, frown I, upon it. I go State College. My old man lived in, in King of Prussia, so I, I, I go with the Philly ties, though. Oh, gosh. There you go. The, the impractical jokers are from Staten Island, Rich. <laughs> I know we've had them on. We've had them on. I know. That's great. It all comes full circle. I love it. <laughs> Kim, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. It's an honor. Thank no, you, Rich no, Eisen. You bet. We'll chat again soon. Okay. At Kim Jones Sports. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs> 